Now, I would like to start the second breakout session, Monetary Policy of Abenomics, Overview and Impact. The panelist for this session is Mr. Sean Baldwin, Chairman of Capital Management Group. <laughs> Mr. Yasper Cole, Managing Director and Head of Japanese Equity Research, JP Morgan Securities Japan. <laughs> Mr. Oki Matsumoto, Chairman and CEO, Manex Group. <laughs> Mr. Thierry Porte, Managing Director, JC Flowers and Company. <laughs> the moderator for this session is Mr. Hiromichi Mizuno, partner, Kola Capital. <laughs> Mr. Mizuno, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this panel. Uh, we are given the, uh, the subject or uh, topic of uh, monetary policy of Abenomics. Uh, and we have uh, great panelists to discuss uh, that particular topic. Uh, but to be honest, I just took a liberty of uh, broadening the subject because I think it's a bit too late to really segregate effect of monetary policy from the other economic policy mix. So, uh, and also the uh, um, monetary policy of uh, you know, the governor, Kuroda, is not really a center of debate at the moment. So uh, I would just try to, first of all, obviously, to uh, follow the, uh, uh, the guidance from the uh, uh, event organizer. We'll discuss how you know, the, uh, the Bank of Japan's monetary policy uh, being, you know, if it's successful or not so far, and then probably just, uh, you know, just try to discuss uh, a bit more in a broader sense how the economic policy has been working. Um, as you know, the, uh, we are all the participants in the uh, capital market from different angles. And uh, I'll be quite surprised if any of us are against Abenomics, <laughs> because obviously we have been uh, benefiting from the uh, uh, you know, more uh, buoyant uh, capital market. Uh, but uh, instead of the, uh, the, my introducing the panelists, and most of them you are very well know, uh, I just let the, uh, the each panelist to introduce themselves. And also, I would like to particularly hear from how your business has been most likely positively affected by Japanese banks monetary, uh, Bank of Japan monetary policy so far. Starting with you, Sean. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Globus and uh, Yoshito Hori for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Sean Baldwin. I founded a firm called Capital Management Group. That firm initially focused on investment banking, uh, particularly with new issue IPOs, uh, underwriting about $68 billion of new issue IPOs as a co-manager. We had a number of institutional investors along with governments uh, and a few super high net worth individuals and pushed onto advisory for countries in the Middle East and in Africa. Uh, I write uh, additionally for Forbes in the area of the capital markets. I have written specifically on the yen and currency policies previously. Uh, my general focus has been that during that time, starting I started covering uh, the yen in the press in about 2010, was that it was strengthened due to a number of factors that will go on over the panel. I am an active trader, and we have a hedge fund as well as a proprietary trading desk. And of course, the strength of the, uh, the yen has been something that we've outlined and we played. And we've also believed in the strength of the equities markets based on the monetary policy. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Jesper Kohl um, from JP Morgan. Um, I've been stuck in Japan since 1986. And um, you know, you remember about six years ago, I started to brand myself as Japan's last optimist. Um, so I hope I'm now the first. Um, Abenomics has changed um, you know, um, my life a little bit uh, because I'm now very busy. Um, it's, um, before, before Abe, uh, you know, it was nice in Yukuri. Um, unfortunately, now it's sort of every uh, day you've got a, at least two or three overnight phone calls. And what's very interesting is that uh, uh, Abenomics, whether we like it or not, has brought a whole new generation 
of global investors interested in Japan. For the last 20 years, uh, Japan specialist interest in Japan has sort of dwindled uh, in equity land. Uh, the long Japan trade was a career killer. You know, why would you want to bother with it? It's just going down. Um, but now there is, uh, you know, a whole generation of people who've never really looked at Japanese companies, have never really looked at the Japanese equity markets. They're now drawn to Japan because uh, the animal spirits are back. There are clear targets out there. And most important, whether we like Abe or not, he's going to be around for at least three years. So that means that there's some consistency that's going to start to come into play and equity investors like that. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Oki Matsumoto. I'm a chairman and the CEO of Manex Group, uh, which uh, runs the online trading business in Japan, in the States, in Hong Kong. And uh, actually, we have 150, we have uh, uh, retail clients in 150 different countries. Uh, I founded the company in uh, 1999. Before that, I was a fixed income partner at Goldman Sachs. Uh, well, the Abenomics really ignited the uh, uh, retail clients' appetite in Japan. So compared to the resolution of the diet about a year ago, uh, our business in Japan is about five times. So uh, we are making a very good money, and uh, <laughs> uh, I really love uh, Abenomics. <laughs> and also uh, in the global uh, the farm, uh, we have uh, this uh, U.S. operation, which is uh, basically not hedged into, into yen. So we have mm -hmm. a quite a big uh, dollar naked uh, exposure in the group, which, you know, value increased a lot, you know, <laughs> uh, last uh, nine months too. So, you know, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't thank enough to have it. <laughs> no, Terry? Terry Porte, I'm a managing director, a partner of uh, JC Flower. So JC Flowers is a firm that a private equity firm that invests only in financial services around the world. Financial services investing, fantastic strategy from 1982 to 2008. Since 2008, not so much of a great strategy. But nonetheless, we persist because that's all we know. So uh, the arrival, uh, the return of the LDP, Mr. Abe, Abenomics, we are the biggest single, share, biggest single shareholder in uh, Shinsei Bank. Uh, in the DPJ regime, the stock price went as low as 56 yen per share, 5, 6 yen per share. Uh, we have gone now since the return of the LDP as high as 296, and we're today at 217. So we are also very happy beneficiaries of uh, Abenomics. Thank you very much. So now you recognize how challenging my job is. Everybody support, <laughs> everybody loves Abe and Kuroda. So we need to have a devil's advocate on the panel, uh, which I may have to play uh, in the end. So I think the, uh, you know, generally speaking, the, what the Kuroda did, uh, supported by Abe, has been positively affected the market. But the, um, what Kuroda did differently from Shirakawa is the one of the questions the general public has, because the other, uh, under the Shirakawa regime, uh, the Bank of Japan also had a quantitative easing. Now the uh, deputy governor, uh, uh, what's his name, um, Kiku, uh, Iwata, he actually named it the QQE, quality and quantitative easing. But the, uh, most of them is basically doing the same thing. So I just wanted to ask particularly, let's start with Sean. I'm, I'm sure you made a lot of money betting on the weakening Japanese yen, but what made you believe this time will be different? Well, effectively, <clears throat> as, as Jesper said earlier, uh, betting against the, uh, the yen was definitely something that we called dubbed the widowmaker. But uh, there were a couple of uh, intrinsic factors. One was uh, Mr. Abe himself, mm. the confidence that he exudes, and I think the strength and leadership in getting the rest of Japan kind of behind his vision, that primarily being from the West, I live in the West, we saw the prime minister's role as revolving. Mm. And you had a greater sense of strength that he was gonna provide for someone to support him. Uh, second, in general, as we watched uh, <clears throat> the events unfold, you got a sense that things were different in Japan. And it, that came from discussions with other market participants, as well as the overall sense that the, uh, that the administration offered. Mm -hmm. So 
our making that bet with the confluence of everything else that was going on, it, uh, it was apparent that this time was not like before. Mm. Okay. Just, um, I think, Jasper, you have been quite um, uh, critical about the Shirakawa regime, but the, um, what was the difference? Yeah, but look, I mean, you know, the, 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 the under Shir it's not just Shirakawa, ever since Mieno, right? Mm. Um, you know, there was an outright attack on uh, asset prices. And give praise where praise is due. I mean, the Bank of Japan is the only central bank that actually actively pricked a bubble economy. They mm -hmm. said when Mieno came in, in uh, 1989, he said, you know, uh, somebody graduating from the best university, working for the best company, can no longer dream of ever being able to buy an, an apartment within a two hour commute. This is bad for the country, this is bad for the economy, it's a bubble and I'm going to destroy it. Mm -hmm. And they did, right? Mm -hmm. Um, under Shirakawa, you had this wonderful attitude, you know, yes, we're doing all we can, but trust me, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, um, you know, now, he, he, actually, he actually succeeded, yes, he did actually say that in Parliament once. Um, you know, but, but, you know, I mean, again, whether you like Abe or not, uh, these people have a can-do attitude, right? Mm -hmm. and there's a clear goal, you want 2% inflation. Um, there's a clear way of trying to achieve it. You're going to double uh, the amount of, uh, you know, base money, the amount of currency that is in circulation, and you're going to do so over the next two years, come hell or high water. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, 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 it's very straightforward. It's a big inflection point uh, that has occurred. Mm. Well, the okay. in intention is very clear. I mm. mean, Shirakawa didn't want to create inflation, but uh, Kuroda is very clear. He wants to create inflation. So that, that's a you know big difference, and as Jesper said, you know since uh, it was uh, March 1990 when the MOF did the uh, the uh, clinching, the limiting the credit extension. Uh, since then, all prices, if it's real estate, share price, or goods, just kept going down in Japan. Mm -hmm. And now you know Abe, Abe and the Kuroda are uh, uh, doubling a monetary base, so they are doing a complete reversal of this uh, 23 years. Trend. So that is enormous. Mm -hmm. with, with, with a clear target, clear intention that they want to create uh, inflation. Right. So this is this is quite different. The, the one question I have is the uh, the before Avi and uh, Kuroda came on board. Actually, I sense that the Japanese people are so traumatized about the uh, bubble economy. So uh, whenever they heard of inflation target, actually they took it almost misunderstood as like a bubbling target. So uh, there's a lot of criticism about the inflation target, but once it's implemented, I really don't hear that the people are you know, now criticizing inflation target. Maybe that's the Japanese you know, the mentality. Once it's decided, we take it for granted. But the, uh, what do you think, the, uh, you know, uh, is there any uh, concern you hear from capital market that the, uh, this will again create a bubble rather than you know, the uh, sustainable inflation? In a market, how do you hear? You know, is there anything you hear from the market, or maybe theory you can you can say what the European is talking about? I think one now. of the things that we have to acknowledge is that this process is going to create uh, a rise in asset prices. I mean, as a matter of fact, it is going to start, uh, and it has started to reflect itself in stock prices. You can already see that. Uh, it will reflect itself in real estate. We can see that. Now, does that then extend itself into a bubble or not? Mm. We'll have to see. Those concerns were out there in the West as well. Uh, you'll find plenty of criticism of uh, quantitative easing mm -hmm. uh, in the United States today. Lots of criticism. As a matter of fact, I would say that the balance of opinion among experts is now against quantitative easing. But let's bear in mind where we came from here mm -hmm. in Japan, where we have been uh, in a rather miserable state for two decades. So mm -hmm. I think we have a, quite a way to go before uh, we'll find ourselves in, in, uh, in bubble territory. But I think the other thing, to just reflect the, the, uh, the earlier comments of the, of the panelists, what was also done by Mr. Abe, the LDP administration, in making this decision is also to lift animal spirits. I mean, that mm -hmm. may be difficult to quantify, mm -hmm. but it is, uh, it is a very important qualifier mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what's going on, and that's had a big impact. Sure, was yeah, that w I was going to say, even though when you asked me that question, and I know as I was uh, saying that, as Terry just pointed out, the animal spirits. I'm, I'm not sure if everybody remembers uh, Mr. Junazumi's tenure or <coughs> other prime ministers, 
but the general sense that the commitment was there to stay mm -hmm. on course mm -hmm. is a gigantic factor in trading because sentiment, mm -hmm. aside from quantitative factors, means a lot. And you could sense that uh, given this, this, this whole administration's focus. Mm -hmm. And that was a very, very big deal in terms of uh, just in, be, in trading the currency. In order to effectively trade Japan, uh, guys usually have a trifecta. Like you're trading the currency, you're going to trade the stocks, but the mysterious part mm. are the bonds. Mm. And not knowing how the bonds are going to react has uh, basically ruined many a career. So <laughs> feeling and being able to get a sense that his cabinet was in line, he was going to have the political will, and that he was going to stay in terms of commitment uh, is what outlined that. Mm. And, you know, just you, you hear lots of times about, and you heard the discussions early about the decline in population, right? And so what that really is is this Western sentiment that they keep trying to echo across to Japan to change your immigration laws. And to a large degree, I don't think that that's as much of a factor because the real factor is uh, WAP. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, to the extent that Japan is preparing for this decrease in population and the savings rate is so high, there's not going to be this dramatic steep decline. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more gradual. And I think that there are underlying things that are going in the background that the government is also doing to kind of combat that. Mm -hmm. I think the, um, you know, a lot of people, we, we just uh, had a, a pre-panel discussion and, uh, you know, the uh, Shirakawa used to attribute that the decline in uh, uh, working population uh, as the, uh, the main cause for depletion, and uh, which I think the, uh, the new monetary policy is challenging. That's not the case. And uh, so far it's been proving. Uh, but the, uh, I just want to ask the panelists, you know, all those like a fundamental, uh, like a demographic issue, is at the moment is the market is actually taking that into account. They just basically decided to neglect it for the time being. I mean, for the today's movement of the share price, you know, you, 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 you don't have to care about the program in 10 years or 20 years. Right. Right? You're going to make money now, today, <laughs> right? So you have to act, right? So the, uh, the demographic thing is a uh, yeah, big problem. Uh, you're right. And, uh, and I think that, you know, while we are enjoying this uh, abenomics, mm -hmm. uh, I think at the end of the day, we have to address to this... Uh, Population issue, but, but by the way, I think uh, Olympics may help us. Yes, you know, we <laughs> let's make baby now, and then we can bring uh, you know kids <laughs> to the the Olympic. Okay, yeah, they are six or seven years old, right. so they will obey to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they will understand the games, and also you know if you, you if you try to take them to the game, and they will come with you. You know, <laughs> this is great, and uh, seriously, uh, uh, it could happen. It could happen, but. Uh, uh, that's something uh, we need to do. By the way, as regard to the productivity per capita, mm. if you calculate in the States and Japan, and Japan's been, you know, last like 15 years, Japan's been uh, uh, outperforming mm. of the productivity per capita of the States. Mm. So, the, the, so the, this losing population is a really fundamental problem, mm. but we don't have to care, we don't have to worry about today mm. when, when you think about the market. I, I, look, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, with the, with the, the demographics is actually creating a tailwind now, you know, mm. because there's a scare, I mean, clearly the issue is, I mean, inflation for inflation's sake is not a good thing. I mean, you don't want to see your purchasing power just depleted, um, you know, so you need to have wage growth. And, uh, you know, we haven't had wage growth basically since 1994 uh, in Japan on aggregate. Um, you know, the good news is that actually the supply of Japanese um, is, um, is stuck. In fact, it's going down. I mean, the country basically is losing about 700,000 people mm -hmm. every year over the next decade. Um, you know, so, you know, the fact that you do have this shortage of labor, the shortage of skills, is actually going to start now to create um, positive wage growth. Um, you know, and it's interesting because, you know, this whole debate about immigration, blah, 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 this is all fantastic, but we've had this, you know, basically for the last 30 years. Mm. Um, what is interesting is when you look at the construction industry, when you look at the logistics industry, when you look at the restaurants industry, already people are running out of labor. You know, it's kitsui kitanai kiken. 
right? It's the triple K part, the dirty end of the economy, where wage pressures are actually starting to build up. Mm. And, uh, you know, at the top end, at the very high end, you know, um, you still start to see downward pressure. Mm. But overall, at the belly and at the, at the bottom end of the beast, things are actually beginning to turn. Mm. You're also seeing a very, very important flip in the Japanese labor market. Koizumi deregulated the labor market so that you could hire part-time workers more easily. Right mm -hmm. Now what you're beginning to see is because of tightenings of rules and regulations, um, you actually start to see companies rehiring people who used to be on a part-time basis are now rehired on a full-time basis. You mm -hmm. know, so that creates a virtuous cycle for the underlying economy. But I think it's very important to note how deep the flip is. There's a flip in monetary policy. Absolutely, we want inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a flip in the Japanese labor market where there is a natural tightness that is now coming through. And then finally, there's another flip that has occurred, which is that this country now runs sizable trade deficits. This is very important. Mm -hmm. So three big macroeconomic elements mm -hmm. have completely turned 180 degrees from where they were before. And quite frankly, you know, where that all is going to end up, we just don't know. It's a giant experiment with some deep fundamentals that go way uh, you know, above what Prime Minister Abe is about. Well, that's interesting, but let me just step back, and I just want to come back to the monetary policy or, or what the Bank of Japan can do or should do. Uh, recently, uh, uh, Governor Kuroder made a statement that he is actually supporting uh, increasing consumption tax, and the Bank of Japan is prepared to ease the other pain. And my question is, first of all, a lot of people, you, you know, the the people who advocate or support the increase in the consumption tax use the bond market crush or reaction uh, of the international investor to the bond market as a reason to deliver the, uh, the consumption tax increase immediately as promised. And, but my question is, do you really think the, if the Abe administration decided to either delay or not to increase consumption tax, would it really affect the bond market as the other some people talk about? And the second is, if the other consumption tax increases and that slow down the economic growth again, is there anything the Bank of Japan can really do? <laughs> Although the Akroda said he would prepare to do something. So I, I'll, I'll maybe start there. I think that um, first, very important, this entire discussion is now taking place in real time in front of the public, in front of decision makers, so that we can have a live discussion. Mm -hmm. That's a very positive thing uh, and a very necessary thing. As far as what Governor Kuroda uh, is saying and what he can do, first, I think he is doing his job by making comments on important issues of mm -hmm. macroeconomic policy. That's his job. Um, qualitative. Now, what, that's the qualitative yeah. part. Uh, what he can do on the quantitative part, yeah, he can step in and do more. What impact will that have? I, I don't think anyone has a scientific answer to that. And with regard to the issue of consumption tax, again, you know, we've lived with this for a long time. You know, is there ever a good time to raise a tax? No, there is not. Um, mm -hmm. But I think what's most important, and you know, will it destroy the economy or not? I don't think it will destroy the economy. How much would it hold the economy back is unclear. Again, I don't think there's a scientific answer. But I think from my perspective, there are two things that are important. One, I think it's important to signal to the market mm -hmm. that there is resolve on this issue. Tough, tough problem, tough decision, no clear right answer, but we are making a decision uh, to move some, to do something that we think is necessary with regard to uh, the overall collection of tax and dealing with mm -hmm. the fiscal situation. Um, so I think that that's an important signal. The market needs to see it and then absorb it. If this doesn't work out, there are other things that can be, other levers that can be pulled and pushed uh, with regard to fiscal policy that can try to alleviate uh, an economic problem that may be created. And again, the fact that we're having all of this discussion out in the open I th gives me more confidence, just as, as one market participant, gives me more confidence that actually uh, we're gonna get something done that makes sense. Sean, yeah. what do you think? As a, as a thesis, when you have an aging population, uh, you liquidate savings. And that, in turn, uh, 
reduces productive investment capital, mm. which by definition gives you less consumption. But the difference with Japan is, is like, it's an orderly decline. Mm. So the, the issue of consumption is still going to be tied into uh, this, this thought behind uh, the WAP, mm. right? And, and how that's effectively delivered. And that's going to affect capital market participation. Mm. <clears throat> and I think almost will render the uh, notion of consumption tax It'll be an issue on the fringe, but I don't think it's dominant. Mm. Well, I think, uh, you know, JGB markets are very much dominated by uh, Japanese banks and uh, life insurance companies. You know, they own, and those uh, uh, similar companies own like 90% or whatever. And I don't think, I don't see any reason for them to sell JGB into the market if, you know, tax is not increased not increased or whatever I mean, mm. you know there's no reason right so i don't see the you know, people may talk about you know jhb market being in, in turbulence blah 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 but i don't i don't think it's going to happen mm. uh, do, if, if you if uh, as regard to tax when you think about the uh, japanese personal uh, uh, financial assets you know held by uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know in, in, individual people uh, it increased by like a 700 trillion yen mm. last like, uh, I don't know, 20 years or whatever, while the uh, Japanese government deficit increased by 700 trillion mm. yen. Mm. Okay, it's, it's like, uh, you know, uh, takohashi hai, haito, you know, <laughs> you, you know the, how do you say in English? Someone eating, nanzo takohashi haito. <laughs> Self-dividend. Hmm? Self-dividend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think uh, people somehow uh, consciously or unconscious, unconsciously know that uh, this money, personal financial asset, is subsidized by this uh, deficit. Mm. So uh, it is natural for, uh, and when you think about the tax amount per GDP, tax, tax income per GDP in Japan is ridiculously low. Mm. Ridiculously low. So I think uh, people somehow, you know, somehow understand that mm. we have to pay back to, to the government. So mm. I, I, I think the, you know, raising consumption taxes, uh, it's the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, we can pay that cost from the savings. So we, we just go back to the normal. Okay. So the, um, what, I mean, you just, add on just, that? just to follow on, okay. on, on to that, I mean, look, Japan has a bad tax system. Mm -hmm. It's a very bad tax system. You know, I hate to say this because I pay a lot of taxes, right? But, um, you know, given the age structure, you know, you need to change towards more indirect taxation. Now, the whole point about Abe, the whole point about Abe, and this is whether it's domestic investors or whether it's international investors, you know, I'm sometimes a little worried because people say, oh, what do foreigners think? What do domestic people think? I mean, mm -hmm. they think the same. They actually both want to make money, yeah. right? So investors say, the point about Abe is that here we've got somebody for the first time in a decade who's going to do what's right, who isn't encumbered by, oh my God, there's an election next year, so we can't possibly do. So the whole premise of Abenomics, you know, in the, in the mind of, uh, of investors is that he's going to do what's necessary for, the, for a brighter future of Japan. And to fix the tax system is one big part, you know, mm. of that. And to sort of backpedal, and exactly mm. like Tarek said, structurally you, you need a better tax system. If there are cyclical problems that come out of it, counter, either with a supplementary budget or with more Bank of Japan monetary policy. That's the key point. It's the coordination side. But to come back to the point, Abe, the reason why global investors and why domestic investors like him is because he's going to do what's right for the country. And with this whole VAT hike debate, for the first time since he became LDP president, there's some question marks that are starting to appear. Does he really have what it takes? Also, from a factual point, right? So the JGB was the best performing sovereign bond last year. Mm. On an underlying basis, right? Why is that? Well, aside from the savings rate, the corporate savings rate in Japan is freakishly high. And so that then powers bank deposits. And with those bank deposits, mm. that effectively supports the bid. And you can be sure that there. That I won't say that they're, I'm not Japanese, but from the outside, I get a strong sense that corporations inside Japan are going to be very supportive of Japan, and they're going to show that support 
by the purchase of additional JGBs, which are powered by the strong savings rate in the corporation and at the, ho- at the housing mm-hmm. level. And that's, as, as uh, <clears throat> was stated by one of the panelists, mm-hmm. almost 93% of the debt is bought internal to Japan. Before I finish, wrap up the discussion on the consumption taxing and the high increase, what, what do you, would you suggest, what would you advise the other administration about the uh, consumption tax increase? I will, I will start. I actually agree with the, uh, Professor Hamada. I think we should just uh, take a step up so that we wouldn't have the, we will have a continuous uh, the price pressure for the consumer to spend earlier, but it's not going to be a big jump and drop. That's what I think, but what do you guys think? I would raise uh, just 5% in one time. Not a three by three and two, just 5% in one time. So you don't think it will affect your your you know, client's confidence in the Japanese stock market? No, no, it will, of course, affect. But, you know, what, 2% each, or, you know, step by step, you know, we don't want that. I mean, hangover needs to get fixed in a day. Mm. Okay, you, you know, so, you know, we, we are drinking now. <laughs> Abenomics is drinking, okay? So even with a hangover, we, we can go, we, we, can, we can work tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, but, uh, you know, if a hangover comes, uh, you know, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow again, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a quite aggressive statement from the uh, CEO of brokerage firm, but... <laughs> so the uh, food, food, food comes next? Terry, uh, you, you know, I've just heard Oki and I'm with him. Let's go for it. I mean, let's get this over with. Let's get it done. As I said earlier, if there's a problem, we can, we can do other things in fiscal policy to make up a gap um, that, uh, that we feel needs to be filled. Uh, and I think that this will show, again, back to animal spirits, I think it will show that this administration has enormous guts, is prepared to deal with hard issues, and is ready to move forward. And I think another ancillary impact, which I think Oki mentioned earlier, earlier uh, to us when we met as a group, is that it will accelerate purchases on the part of the population, and that is something that we would like to do to get the metabolism of the economy moving faster. So let's do it. From a historical uh, basis, when we saw Chile have problems effectively rather than doing major cuts, they made larger cuts, and the economy responded positively. So that would, from a historical basis, be be an excellent recommendation. Do what you promised to do and keep doing it, mm-hmm. right? And, um, you know, so basically, you know, do the, do the five to eight thing, um, you know, and be at the ready there. And then don't forget the other stuff that you promised because, you know, you promised something that is very complicated that very few other countries in the world have, which is called, you know, the third arrow, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, a structural growth policy, um, you know, so deliver on that, right? Uh, don't waste time on mm-hmm. things that supposedly have already been decided. That's good. So the, uh, I think we have some policymakers in the audience. And uh, <laughs> actually, I'm very surprised because I was watching the TV news the other day, and almost every single economist in Tokyo support the uh, the three percent increase in uh, the. Uh, the Don't listen to economists. Huh? <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> yes. Okay, do, so do you know that every economist got a visit from the Ministry of Finance at some point over the last six months? Right, so okay. So we know exactly what to say. <laughs> you are kind of uh, scripted. Okay, whose uh, iPhone is running, ringing? <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, the, uh, so far we have been very happy with the abenomics, and, uh, but the, uh, the BOJ obviously took a huge risk by uh, stepping into unprecedented stage of uh, uh, you know, the uh, monetary policy. And uh, now the US is kind of struggling how to just to temper it. It's just gonna, you know, by the announcement of tempering it, today is quite topical because Larry Summers declined or you know, withdrew from his, uh, you know, his, uh, his race for the uh, uh, FRLV governor, uh, chairman. So, uh, you know, the getting out of this uh, quantitative easing is very, very painful. And uh, as the Kuroda says, we are doing the unprecedented level of quantitative easing. So uh, what's the risk? What the market should be afraid of? Is there any you know, the immediate concern we should have? Or as uh, Oki said earlier, just, just have a hangover for a while and think about no, it no, later. No, just drink fast. <laughs> drink fast. Drink, just <laughs> yeah. drink, enjoy yeah. drinking. <laughs> enjoy drinking. Yeah. 
Is there any, like, you know, the, the concern we may see uh, within, uh, you know, foresee, you know ne foreseeable future? Uh, you know, if the other, for example, like, I will just put in an example, like, if Bank of Japan couldn't deliver uh, inflation target in year time, uh, would they be under pressure, under criticism, and they have to do, change their policy? Or the people lose their confidence in the, you know, the QQE? Is it just, can you just discuss what, what could be the potential risk related to... Uh, unprecedented level of QQE. If price doesn't get higher, then supply more. You know, the, I, people talk about, uh, you know, this uh, supplying monetary, uh, uh, um, too much of money is bad, but I, I doubt it. Mm. When you think about, uh, you know, uh, ancient age, I mean, I, okay, let, let, me, let me think about it. <laughs> I think the, the, the greatest invention of human being is currency. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, uh, you know, from, from, from uh, the age we are exchanging goods, and then they created a coin, mm -hmm. and they created a gold exchangeable, you know, currency, and then paper, mm -hmm. just paper, BOJ bill or treasury bill. This is great invention. Okay, so that, that, that uh, you know, uh, that, uh, how do you say, expanded economy, and when you think about the uh, you know, economy today and uh, you know, 200 years ago, whatever, today is better, mm. right? So, so printing paper is not a bad thing to do. Okay, of course, you, know, you, have, you may have to adjust somehow, mm -hmm. but the uh, basic theme is it, it, it good thing to do. Um, let, me, let me be the German in the room. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, m money is great, it's fantastic, it's really nice, but money doesn't create growth. Um, you know, Kathy and I, we've, we've got this, uh, this uh, teenage kid, um, you know, and he gets an allowance of 10,000 yen a week. And trust me, if we double that to 20,000 yen a week, um, that's not going to improve his chances of becoming an engineer or get, making it to Harvard. Mm -hmm. The program is, I'm sorry, the program is if every, all other kids are given 20,000, and if you just keep to your kid just 10,000, then it's a disadvantaged. Right, so we need to equalize our position in this, uh, in, in this today's world. And the Japan's been so stingy in printing money. That was a problem. So I think, uh, you know, we are just trying to be back to the, to the new normal. The new normal is with uh, lots, uh, lots of money, lots of papers. Mm. What do you think, Sean? Well, first of all, um, <laughs> I don't make policy. But I will say that... Uh, when you continue to save, one of the things I would question is that having a tremendous amount of savings, as you know, leads to making uh, an export-dependent economy. So <clears throat> that's potentially a problem because Japan is the leading saver country, effectively out of the top three savers uh, ahead of uh, both uh, China and, uh, and Canada. So. That's a problem, but the bigger problem is, is that with the IMF uh, monitors debt, so it, this is created from GDP. If the average countries rose uh, like from 2008 to 2012, they went from like 83% to 110%. Uh, during that same period, Japan went to 239%. Mm. So that's a, a looming factor in the background to be wary of that I'll agree with Terry, as he stated, there are other things that can be done, but that's a, a potential downside. Mm -hmm. I imagine that that will engage Very a reaction cool. on it. So you know the the, uh, the you know the vast monetary experiment has been conducted now for some time in the United States, and of course the worry that was first expressed, if you go back to when we started, was that oh my goodness, you know this vast monetary experiment, it's going to create hyperinflation. Back to the German problem. That's what they've always been worried about with monetary expansion. Well, we've been going through this now for a long time, and some might argue that through manipulation of the statistics with regard to inflation, uh, some might argue that it's actually real, but in any case, we have not had a significant problem of any kind of hyperinflation in the United States. So back to the drinking, as Oki has been <laughs> saying. You know, we have a lot more that we can drink before we are so drunk that we cannot see straight. Uh, and suffer from hyperinflation. So we've got plenty of room to go, uh, and I like the BOJ's chances of getting to where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think the, 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 we, can, we can discuss this at infinitum, but the key issue is that actually, you know, here in Japan, right, this is the first in history that a central bank commits to massive quantitative ease not in response to a banking crisis. I mean, the Japanese banks, right, um, you know, were fine, they were lending, they were buying overseas assets, you know, already about a year before Kuroda came about. Uh, everywhere else, whether it was Sweden in the 1990s, the United States, the ECB, the Bank of England, it was, oh my God, the banks are going bankrupt, we got to give them, you know, more liquidity, mm -hmm. right? So, and this is the good news, and in the here and now, and we can talk about monetary policy, but the real change is the fact that there is on lending, if you look at the banking system in Japan, it is well capitalized. The banking system in Japan is now actually increasing uh, its other assets. They're not just buying JGBs anymore. So there is lending to Tokyo Electric Power because they're bankrupt and they need all the help we c they can get. Um, but there's also lending internationally. Uh, and very importantly, in, in my view, most importantly, you've got Mr. and Mrs. Watanabe stepping up to the plate you do actually find that for the first time in about 30 years, there is a mortgage credit cycle. So that there is a younger generation of Japanese who now actually realize, wow, real estate has become cheap. This is the time to lock in very low interest rate. This is a time when my job security is beginning to improve. Um, and that on lending, that domestic credit cycle is really absolute key. And in my personal opinion, we can talk about the Bank of Japan until we're blue. The real thing that we need to monitor is bank credit growth. And bank credit growth right now has actually started to expand. Let's hope it continues to grow. But do you really think that the, uh, the purchase of the risky asset is really necessary? Because I, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm generally for you know, the uh, uh, BOJ monetary policy, but <laughs> I am... Who do you work for? <laughs> you know, I just decided to play devil advocate. And uh, I, was, I was listening to uh, Matsui-san's presentation before, and uh, having more uh, women in the workforce will increase the GDP immediately by 15%. So it's much more significant BOJ monetary policy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm just trying to question that. The, is it worth taking that risk? Uh, it just, you know, I... I do agree that the increasing monetary base and then et cetera, but buying non-traditional asset, it just seems to me a bit, you know, uh, outrageous in a sense. Well, one, that's kind of how, how I make my living, so I, that's how I look at the world. <laughs> but, but I will say in a, in a uh, point to what Jesper said, uh, that in, when he talked about TEPCO or the, uh, one of the, because Japan is very dependent upon exports, one of the key exports that Japan had to offer was nuclear power. Hmm. So the systematic staggering and shutdown of the nuclear power uh, companies and their, their effective subsidy is causing a twofold problem. One is, there's always this question by Westerners, so, and I'm saying this because I'm from the West, about the allocation of resources by Japan. So that hmm. brings up that question. The second is, effectively, that this is going to be a tax on the Japanese economy. So prices have already went up approximately 15% over the past two years. There's about 2.7 trillion yen in losses, mm -hmm. but that's been accelerated because over the last three months through June, that's been about 1.7 trillion yen alone. And we haven't got to winter, which is going to mean that you have to negotiate LNG mm -hmm coal gas to to take advantage I mean to to compensate for that but at the same time as we think about emerging countries uh, Japan was clearly the front runner in building nuclear plants mm -hmm. that's going to be and you know unfortunately you had the Fukushima plant which is one of your old plants because you guys were so much more ahead of everybody in the West now that's going to deter mm -hmm. GDP once again as uh, if you lose that competitive edge that you had in selling that mm. those those products into Africa and the Middle East. You talked about basically two different type of costs related to a nuclear plant. One is opportunity cost. Yes. You you know Japan will lose the opportunity to sell abroad. Well, and that's I, I, and I, I would clarify that I won't say they'll lose it. I would say that they had a decidedly stronger competitive advantage, mm -hmm. and that's going to be weakened to a degree because of the perception, because right. of the older Fukushima plant, sure. which is not the technology they put sure. in other places. I understand, but the, uh, the second cost, which is more direct cost, yes. Japan ended up paying higher for the energy. 
And yes. that's, we think, in, in, uh, uh, it would damage uh, the economic growth of the Japan. If we think about the combination, once again, of an aging population, reducing their savings, less productive investment capital, less consumption, and then we think about higher energy costs spread about, mm. that's also additional less consumption because it's an effective tax on the economy. So consumption is very important, right? Uh, compared to the, the diet resolution at that day, you know, the market cap of the uh, Japanese stocks went up by 160 trillion yen, mm. okay? And the Japanese retail own 20% of that directory and 5% of that through mutual fund. So 25% of 160 trillion yen is held by retail clients in Japan in a way that they can see the price appreciation vividly and every day. 25% of 160 trillion is 40 trillion yen, 400 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the real estate price, uh, the value, tend to be like a twice of the uh, personal financial asset maybe. So, you know, we're talking about a huge amount of uh, increase of uh, wealth by mm -hmm. those uh, Japanese nationwide people. Mm -hmm. That will support the uh, uh, consumption and probably that will support CAPEX too because the corporate executive, executive is individual people as well. If BOJ just buying JGB, it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. okay? You, you, you say, you know, uh, uh, untraditional assets or whatever, but, you know, BOJ buys the stocks or, you know, whatever, REITs or whatever, that helps those asset prices to go up, mm -hmm. and that, that's good for those consumptions. Mm -hmm. Buying JGB doesn't, doesn't help. It, it will just, uh, you know, just uh, circulate money inside mm -hmm. the professional markets, and it doesn't help. Oki is making a very important point because the, the, the way this works, right, is this is not about CPI 2% in two mm -hmm. years' time. I mean, the CPI is... In, you are you know, skeptical sort of, about 2%. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely indifferent to the CPI. The mm -hmm. CPI is an, 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 an exercise in arithmetic, right? Uh, what matters here to square the circle, right, is to actually have shisankoka, right, to have, uh, you know, positive wealth effects. And, you know, you know in, in, in the West, now I say this after having decried it, I call ABE, you know, A-B-E, A-B-E, Asset Bubble Economy. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's what this man is all about. Um, you know, which is a good news because, you know, remember that real estate prices here in Tokyo, I think even here in Kojimachi, right, they're down to a level last seen in 1984. Mm -hmm. um, you should also note that actually, you know, the Japanese household sector is unbelievably strong. Mm. You've just recently done the calculation. 44% of all people over 20 in Japan have no debt and own the home that they live in. I mean, that's spectacular. In America, that number is negative. Mm. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it is. It's, actually, I don't know what the number is in America, but 40, what is it? 20% of all mortgages are still underwater, right? Something like that, right? So, you know, the potential for wealth effects, right? Particularly now that you do have, um, you know, 25% of the people over 65, right? They paid off their mortgage into declining home prices. Mm. Now the positive wealth effects, I think that's how you're going to square the circle. Mm. Theory, if you have any comment to no, add. Just, and, and so, and, and that's why we need more animal spirits, because, you know, <laughs> if we start moving that money, the more drunk people, the more money for everybody. No, because, well, you see, the private, but, that, but there's another important point that, that, uh, that, that uh, Jesper is making. The Japanese private individual, that sector, they're very sober. Mm -hmm. They're very sober. They've been sober for a long time. We would like them to get a little bit more excited. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will have a positive impact on the economy. Mm -hmm. You know, the b biggest cat catalyst of the uh, 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 improving the capex is is the the price appreciation then people need need fear to need to act today than tomorrow right. can i just make a point on this sure. because this this is and this goes back to your point about the women participation rate mm -hmm. right i mean the whole point of the exercise is to mobilize resources right to mobilize the resources that japan has and japan's resources are one thing and one thing only it's the people and the people are absolutely phenomenal. And the Japanese corporations, the Japanese government, over the last 20 years have robbed the people. Right? I mean, look at your employment system. I mean, you talk Natsukashi, you say, ooh, lifetime employment. There's no lifetime employment. It doesn't exist anymore. 40% of the people now are basically on a part or contract basis. 
This is up from, this is more than double from where it was 20 years ago. So you have actually created a two-tier society, which has done you well because it has allowed for the corporate sector to accumulate lots of savings. It has allowed for asset prices to adjust. It has allowed for the economy to stay relatively competitive. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about CAPEX, right, when you talk about Seicho Toshi, what should you invest in? Should you build another steel plant outside of Tokyo? Absolutely not. Please do not do that. But could you please invest in your people? Jinzai Toshi is, in my opinion, the what, most really, important thing. Can you thing be that a we, bit more concrete? What do you mean by Jinzai Toshi? Or this country has a shortage of 750,000 healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. Healthcare, we can all agree, is one of the high growth, one of the big prospective high growth areas of the Japanese economy. How come that in a high growth area there's a shortage of 750,000 people? And nobody is profitable either. Huh? <laughs> nobody is profitable in that industry has, either. Well, yeah. this is because of rules and regulation, yeah. but it's also because nobody makes any money mm -hmm. working in healthcare. If you become a nurse in Japan, it's a feverishly difficult process, yeah, right? And then at the end of the process, you end up making less money than you do working part-time at a Starbucks. This is rules and regulation. Mr. Abe, hello, third arrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the, I'm trying to, to, to you know, the <laughs> motivate people to come up with some risk factors because you know, as you know, we are all supporting the Venomics uh, and the other uh, Corona. So, but the uh, but Sean, you mentioned about hold on, Sean, you mentioned about a high utility bill because of the weaker end and uh, you know the no nuclear plants uh, you know working at the moment, operating at the moment. Is there any other risk factor we, you know that people should be aware of? Uh, no, and I mean, as a, initially, when you think about the opportunity for wealth to be created which is my focus. Mm -hmm. I think that for reasons that Jesper said, as well as Oki, we think that Japan is gonna do phenomenally well. And that's how we're positioning ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, the earlier comments I made on GDP are real, and those are things that should be guarded against by the administration. But I think that all those things, as Terry said, are very manageable. Mm -hmm. uh, I highlight them because they are potential risk if there was too much hubris. Mm -hmm. But I, I effectively, I'm, I'm very long the, the uh, Japan, the present time. Great, <laughs> great to hear that. The, the risk is very simple, is cost push, that we find ourselves in two years time, the unemployment rate is 2% mm. and wages are rising at 4% while productivity is rising at 2% because the third error never happened. I mean, that's the real risk, that you're so, running out of labor and productivity growth doesn't pick up. So risk really reside within the like a growth strategy or construction reform. Yeah. I think the risk is uh, if Abe succeed in making people more, you know, animal thinking, animal mm -hmm. mindset, and uh, learn about English, and then uh, people in the, in the long future, uh, when people start feeling comfortable taking money out of Japan and uh, deposit into the non-Japanese financial institution, mm -hmm. that is going to be a big risk. Right. You know, what Japan, uh, different from Argentina or Greece, mm -hmm. is, you know, we did, wh whatever happens, you know, non-performing loan programs or whatever happens, you know, stay in. <laughs> money stayed in inside <laughs> Japan. So that is very, you know, it's very uh, different. Yeah. It, 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 it catch twenty two. You know, if mm. we, we, we do not do we not stay in this state, you know, probably not. But that is something uh, I think in the long run, uh, the government or the nation should be careful. So to round out the discussion of risks, uh, the other is the, the is the risk that is not in Japan's control. So what happens in the U.S.? What happens with mm. Europe? What happens with? Uh, monetary policy uh, in other parts of the world, what happens with China, what happens with Russia. And related to what Oki has mentioned, you know, that risk uh, with regard to investment overseas reflects itself in the currency. And one of the things that's important right now is that unlike periods in the past when the yen has weakened, uh, there has been no criticism of Japan. Mm -hmm. and there has been no criticism of, you know, 
even in the U.S., there has not been really any criticism. Maybe they haven't been paying attention, but uh, they have time to catch up on criticism, but there is no criticism about a weak yen uh, mm. and what implications that has for other economies. But if we have a dramatically weaker yen, that uh, conversation is going to become much louder. Sean, please. Yeah, that's a very salient point that he just made. In 2011, when Mr. Zumi was uh, going to go attend a, a G20 meeting, he decided... Uh, Anybody remember Azumi, though? <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the problem. Minister, <laughs> Minister of Finance. He decided to uh, move the interest rate ahead of time, and he was not admonished by any member of the G7. As a G7 member, that was something unthinkable, mm -hmm. but no one said anything. And I know for me in particular, that highlighted a lot of what I thought was going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to open the floor, but just uh, if Terry, you make just a technically, it's comment. not correct what you said. There was once one country that vehemently opposed, um, you know, yen depreciation. That country is called the People's Republic of China. In mm -hmm. uh, the autumn of 1997, um, this was the day before Bill Clinton, who was president at the time, um, you know, before he visited China for the first time. Uh, you remember Bob Rubin standing in front of a CNN camera and saying the strong dollar is no longer deemed to be in the interest of the United States. Mm. This was from pressure from the People's Republic of China. And if I dare to take off my glasses so I cannot see in the distance but forecast more precisely, mm. uh, my prediction is that by the time 2015 comes along, uh, you will find the People's Republic of China actually putting pressure, right, um, you know, for a stop of yen depreciation mm -hmm. because at that time the Chinese will find that their exports uh, mm -hmm. are no longer competitive. Well, the Japan still have many like economists who think that the uh, strong guy yen is in uh, you know, country's interest. We should send those economists to China to explain <laughs> how, how bad to have a weaker currency. But, all right, I think we have uh, about 90 minutes, so we're just going to open to the floor. Uh, is any question, raise a hand, and please wait for the microphone to come. Thank you, Greg Story. One thing that hasn't come up so far is company uh, lending. We've talked about individuals borrowing. Uh, companies did borrow, had a bit of a tough time paying back, sort of got a bit chastened about it, have done very well, and the profits are well up. Uh, are we going to see a return, do you think, of companies being more ambitious about going back into debt uh, with the banks, or do you think that's really they're going to try and fund from within their own uh, built up of, of profits and capital? Who pick up this question? Maybe Thierry? You know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the problem in Japan with regard to corporate lending is that we've, we've had now for a very long time a completely distorted market, you know, with interest rates as low as they've been. Uh, and so uh, I'm not, uh, personally I'm not convinced, and I certainly don't see in the numbers, uh, Jesper is correct, we are seeing an increase in, in bank lending. It's not coming from corporations. Um, uh, it's, coming from, uh, it's coming from individuals, it's, coming, it's going to real estate, uh, it's not coming from the corporate sector per se. I, I have one proposal. Okay, the Japanese corporation, they have, uh, depending on the calculation, the way of calculation, they are said to have like uh, 100 or 200 trillion yen, could be more, you know, mm. sitting in, the, in their accounts, right? Mm. So we, in cash, we have to mobilize that. I have one proposal. What about making a dividend as uh, 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 deductible right. from, from, P, from profit? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the corporations, you know, so they, they, they will pay a lot of dividend, mm. and then the government can, you know, uh, 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 as Mr. Aso, said, you know, many corporations in, J in Japan not paying tax, right? And not, not the listed companies, but the unlisted, vast majority of unlisted companies not paying tax, okay? That they try to make the company kind of break even, okay? So if the, if the dividend uh, is uh, uh, deductible, then I'm sure, you know, there will be a lot more dividend. So owner receive legally a dividend from the company, and then, you know, the 20% tax will be easily withheld to the government. So, and also, you know, as regard to the listed market, share price will just uh, skyrocket. <laughs> okay, huge. And that will create a great uh, asset uh, effect as well. 
Uh, this is, uh, and then the corporation will start using those money, and then eventually they start borrowing from, from banks. Good. By the way, his company is listed, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we may pick one or two, two, two questions together, and then for the benefit of time. Um, yeah, oh, okay. Who's got the first mic? Yeah, I, I have a mic. Yeah, um, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about animal spirits. Um, I think on the panel here and many people in the room, we have a lot of lions and tigers and whales and elephants, very big, successful creatures. Um, but I think there's still a lot of people in Japan, a lot of rabbits and dogs and turtles and smaller animals that basically their income is not growing for you know, almost two decades, and gasoline prices are going up, and a lot of households still seem to be very concerned about the economic situation, and it's great that the lions and tigers and whales and elephants make money, but um, do you see this, the, the other animals, some of this sort of filtering down and through the economy, or, or does that not matter? I I'll mean, in a, in a bigger picture. The system, yeah. Okay, I'll take the uh, the next question and come back to the panel. Hi, I'm Tijan Singh. Um, my question is, um, what what would be the signal of telling the end of the Abenomics? As you said, the Abenomics, Abenomics is a drinking party, but you know, every party cannot last forever. So, um, if you have anything in your mind, that so would I mean, be great. What what would the, be the you know signaling factor? Uh, telling us the end of the economics. That's, that's a very good question. How to close your position. Can I answer position? that one? Because the, I can put a number to that, right? And that's just affordability, right? If you look at the average income by the turtles and the tigers, you know, whatever the average is, right? Probably nobody is the average, but, you know, there's a number. Um, so, you know, if you buy the average apartment in metropolitan area of Tokyo, right? Right now it costs you about five times your average annual income. Okay, at the peak of the bubble, that was 23 times. The historic average is about 11 times. So the end of Abenomics, where Mr. Kuroda is going to say, you know what, we've had enough, enough asset inflation, pick a number, 12 times average income. That's uh, you know when when they're going to start to step on the brakes. So you've got asset prices capable of impre improving by about 50% from here. The, uh, answering his question, it's easy. You, you, you can't you can't predict a peak. But you, you, you just look at the price of uh, you know, stock or real estate, and then it, it goes up, and if the party is over or, or ending over, whenever it starts going down, then you, know, you, 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 you understand the you know, party is over. So it's, not, it, it, it's very easy. You don't have to ask yourself a qualitative question. You just see the market, you know, the, the phenomena, and the quantitatively, and you, know, you, you don't miss the end of the party. Let me rephrase the first question. Um, so how long the uh, sort of general public, I don't want to call it uh, rabbits or turtle because it sounds so negative, but ordinary, you know, average the uh, household, how long they have to wait for them to feel that economics is actually helping them? And how long people can be patient to wait for them to, you know, permeate through the uh, system? We'll just if you're a landowner, they're going to initially feel it through the, uh, the value of the real estate that they have. And if they participate even on a smaller level in any investment process with their company, they're going to be wealthier, like as a exponential. I think the answer is never. Um, I was here um, during... Um, what's that called, the bubble economy in the late 1980s, and the Japanese were unbelievably worried about endaka fukyo and about all sorts of things. It was only, you know, sort of for a very brief period, you know, that there was some sort of mass euphoria uh, in the back end of 1989. Um, global conditions are terrible. Um, you know, there is three billion people in the free world who want your job and my job. Uh, that competition is not going to slow down. So to get a general feel-good factor, um, I think is going to be very, very difficult to come through. Also, I'm a big fan of Naomi Klein and uh, the shock economy. Um, you know, given the amount of government debt that there is, trust me, it's in the government interest to ensure that you feel insecure. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm bullish. I'm very bullish. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we don't, we don't see... Yet the the appreciation of uh, nationwide la land price mm. uh, clearly because uh, you know the appraisal price is uh, something uh, they, they 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 gauge and they uh, announce just once a year 
Okay? I have a friend who is a, a deputy president of the listed uh, real estate developer, who is not a Mitsubishi or Sumitomo, those guys, so they have to buy land to develop uh, apartments. Okay? And listening to, to him, he said, uh, it was like a two months ago, but he said, uh, just like uh, several months ago, the price they can get the land is 20% below the appraisal price. Now it's a 5% above the appraisal price. Mm. This is two months ago, so maybe today, maybe higher. Okay, so once those, uh, th th this is for Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, Fukuoka. But the once those uh, price data for the real estate start being published, it will create, uh, it will impact a huge for the mindset of the nationwide people. Not only elephants, but also anybody. Because you, and the, as I said before, the, the value of the real estate of Japan is probably twice as much as personal financial assets. So maybe we're talking about uh, 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 3,000 3, trillion yen. It, it's huge, right? So uh, it, it's just a matter of time, I think. Mm. Okay, we'll take next. In answer, to the, in answer to Carl Kay's question, yes, it, it does matter what the average Japanese person feels of whatever type of animal. Um, and I do think that uh, we have had just a period that has gone on for too long, not, not just of insecurity, but I, I think also of uh, a, a lack of a feeling that one had a certain amount of control over one's own destiny. Um, and we've had too much distortion. Uh, you know, the, 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 the crazy thing about all the savings uh, that, uh, that people have at, at, uh, at banks uh, of course, the unfortunate thing is that they're not putting their money at Monex and, you know, and making money in the market. But, you know, it, it is at 0.01%. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, this is kind of a distortion uh, of rather serious proportion. If we have a successful Abenomics, uh, we're going to see interest rates gradually move up. Uh, and they're going to be at rates that are going to be a little bit more attractive than they are now, and we're going to have a normalization uh, over time in the market. This is, by the way, what the U.S. also has to grapple with. Mm -hmm. It's the same problem. It's just been over a shorter period of time. Uh, and uh, it will have a very big impact. It needs to have a very big impact. Okay. We'll take other question, please. Um, yeah, let me do that. And then second microphone to the... Yeah, you can start. Okay. Uh, my question is, uh, I'd like to react on uh, Mr. Matsumoto's uh, about the central bank, uh, central bank uh, printing money. Yeah, uh, I just realized that that would cause uh, inf uh, an infl inflationary uh, world. So uh, what I want to ask is, uh, uh, had the, uh, uh, had, I mean, uh, because this is seen as quantitative easing by the other countries, right? And has it been factored out that the, uh, this could actually trigger currency war? Uh, how are we looking at that? Uh, like, for example, Korea. I travel a lot in Korea, and uh, you, you already hear a lot of complaints about uh, their products being, becoming less competitive. And it's not only them. There are also other countries. So how do we have uh, uh, this kind of currency issue uh, being factored out uh, in our overall optimism? Well, it, 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 it's wise to avoid to talk about the currency war. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the thing is that uh, you know, being in Japan, you know, you 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 are mistaken to think to feel that the deflation is standard. But it's not true. In you know, what's what's really what one thing really happening for sure this, in this world is explosion of population. Okay, so there is an uh, inflationary pressure just across the world. And Japan is just a completely strange place. Okay? So for, for Japan to have the same pace or similar pace of inflation equal to the world is, is nothing wrong. It, it, we, we have to do that. But uh, once we start talking about this currency, then it will create uh, lots of uh, diplomatic program, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I, I, I don't want to, okay. I, 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 I don't know about the currency. That's fine. So sure. Well, realistically, from a uh, currency trading perspective, um, Oki is correct in that Japan is different than most places. But 
the actual reason it's been so deflationary is because you have the third largest economy and you have the capacity uh, to take on currency trades from the world and it's regarded as a safe haven um, because you are so productive. So you have this artificial environment that has been to a large degree put upon you by currency traders from outside of your borders. Yeah. And that's just factual. Japan will continue to be a safe haven. Uh, and now I would say that you have even more capacity because uh, Philip Hildebrand, who was running the SMB, who had, prior to that worked at a very famous place called More Capital, he was effectively uh, keeping people at bay from going into the Swissy. Mm. When he left, the intellectual capacity as far as from the trading community of what would be done there, it probably diminished as everyone figured that he would continue uh, just on what Hildebrand put in place. That put more pressure mm. on, on the yen. So you, you were saying that the yen will continue to be a safe haven. Uh, the, the world currency. will continue to look at the yen as a safe haven. Uh, it, they're going to test the will of Mr. Abe. So the, the question is, does Mr. Abe have the leadership mm. and the strength to continue through to, as Jesper put it, to do the best thing for Japan, mm. where previously prime ministers have somewhat folded? Yeah. Right. So traders are not going to just say, well, he said he's going to do that. They're going to test him. So the capacity is really the issue, and that capacity will continue to be tested, which mm. results in a deflationary good. environment. I always, think, sorry, I always think that it's, I mean, the Japanese media and the politicians stop saying, enyasu kabudaka. It's like a, just a one combination of uh, the event. It's not. So uh, it just, they just automatically say, you know, these days we have Enyasu Kabudaka, which is okay. That, that's, that's statistically correlated, but the, uh, politically they shouldn't use that combination because it will ignite the currency war and international debate. And uh, it's nothing, nothing, you know, they personal about Korea, but Korea is a bit unfair for Korea to criticize the, uh, the weaker yen because they benefited from weak won for too long. So. Anyway, um, any other question? We have about three, four minutes. Yeah. If you were looking for a um, devil's advocate, I suppose it's the, the problem that uh, QE works by taking the toxic assets off, um, off the banks and, and putting it on the central bank's balance sheet. So Japan's surely got two problems. One, it's people save too much money, and two, it's companies save too much money. So the Bank of Japan goes, got a great idea, you haven't got enough money, let's go and print some more. Can that make any sense? Okay, maybe one more question if there's any, because otherwise we will just uh, ask the, the uh, panelists to answer that question and we'll wrap up. Anybody is, uh, is willing to make a comment to that? I was waiting for Jasper. No, no, no. <laughs> well, the U.S. is different in that we are the global reserve uh, currency for the world, and that changes that game. So I, I will effectively say, as an American, as a Westerner, to a large degree, we cheat in that sense, mm -hmm. and you don't get that same opportunity. That's a, just a very honest statement. Uh, this is very good. Obviously it is, right? Um, now I actually, sorry, now I'm going to completely discredit myself, but I'm just going to quote some facts. I think that we are living in the rearview mirror. Japan is not a creditor country anymore. Mm -hmm. Japan is a debtor economy. Why do I say that? Um, if you look at the bond market, so national debt, how much of national debt is owned by foreigners? Two years ago it was 5%, today it's 9.3% and it's going to continue to go up. If you look at the other capital market, which is called the equity markets, over the last two months, over the last six months, over the last two years, over the last six years, over the last 20 years, the only net buyer has oh, been the years. foreign saver. If you look at the real estate market, there is starting to be a little bit of mobilization and leverage from the domestic household sector. But if you look at liquid capital markets, the equity market and the bond market, you are seeing net capital inflows. This is not a shock because trust me, I was born in 1961. The reason I remember that I was born, no, sorry. The reason I bring up 1961 <laughs> is because since 1961, Japan has been running trade surpluses. Japan is running trade deficits. You talk about the corporate surplus. 
Toyota has more money than the two mega banks combined, cash mm -hmm. holdings, right? What you find, however, is that the money that Toyota makes in Kentucky, which is where they make all their money because they don't make money on domestic production, they keep their money on deposit with JP Morgan, of course, in the United States yeah. of America. This does not flow into the Mizuho Bank to buy JGBs, right? So there's a big fallacy because the current account tells you that you still run a surplus of about 1.5% of GDP. But the current account is a wealth concept, it's not a flow concept. So Toyota making money in Kentucky automatically gets counted as an inflow, but it's not an inflow in the real no, world, a cash inflow. as I've just cited, because Japan is actually a net debtor country. So it's a big change that has happened, and unless you switch back on the nukes in size, I'm not talking about one or two, I'm talking about 15 to 20 of these things need to be switched on, you're going to continue to run trade deficits in this country. Any other questions, other comments to in, 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 order, in order to mobilize the, those uh, huge money sleeping, uh, both by individuals or corporate savings, we have to create inflation. So for that purpose, you know, to, to print the money, to create inflation, to mobilize those money, doesn't make sense, I think. Uh, by the way, just, just, just one potential correction, okay? I, I may be wrong. The, uh, I, I think retail being the uh, net buyer, of uh, Japanese equity because uh, that uh, uh, typical data doesn't include uh, uh, purchase into IPOs. And the 92% of the, uh, 82 percent of the IPOs are bought by Japanese retail. Okay. So I believe uh, maybe. everything together, maybe yeah. Jap uh, retail is uh, slightly net buy. Okay, good. We, ne we need to wrap up, but the, uh, I promise to ask you uh, at the end of our discussion, any advice, comment, or, you know, uh, for Kuroda and Abe. So, everybody? I would say look forward to the development of high yield markets and possibly mm -hmm. samurai bonds. You know, the advice is just coordinate, 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 right? Be orchestrated. You've, you've embarked on a very big experiment, right? The world needs to see action and not, you know, bara bara. Coordinate between government and the central bank. You mean? Okay. No, they are doing well. I think they are doing fine. Okay. Drink more. Theory. You know, be tough. But I would just like to, and this might be a way of concluding. Uh, I think that uh, what Jesper has just told us is important. And why is it important? It is important because if you do accept the premise that in effect, and it's hard to get all the data perfectly correct, but if you do accept the premise that Japan's gone from creditor nation to debtor nation, what that means in practical terms is that as a creditor, Japan can finance itself. Who cares mm -hmm. about what the rest of the world thinks? Who cares about making any changes domestically? We can keep funding this thing for as long as we like, but the moment you become a debtor, then what happens? And I think this is understood particularly well by Kuroda, mm -hmm. particularly well, is that once you become a debtor, you depend on people in other parts of the world right. to finance your game. And as a result, what we have now is requiring a large number of changes. So if there's one piece of advice I would conclude with, to Kuroda is keep the pressure on the Abe administration on the third arrow because that will be critical to long-term success. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Our time is up. So the, uh, give a big clap to uh, the panelists. Thank you very much. <laughs>